Um, good evening, Gambia. You're welcome to yet another edition of your favorite program, this is on Educational Development, which comes your way each and every Tuesday on Fine TV, your only viewpoint. Um, today's episode is another interesting one. We have a special lady, and then she will get to introduce herself later. We'll have a, a, I would not call it a lengthy discussion, but we'll have a very vigorous discussion about her experience as a teacher and her role in the GTU and all that. Um, and I'm your host, Raki Jalo. You're welcome, madam. Thank you, Raki. Good evening. My name is Janet Antoinette Mansal. I am the gender desk officer of the Gambia Teachers Union. Raki, you are welcome into the GTU headquarters here in Carnifin. Thank you. Thank you, Auntie Janet. It's good to um, feel welcomed. Um, this is our house. This is teacher's house. So we're all teachers and we feel welcomed already. Um, Auntie Janet, before we go any further, I would like to ask you um, what your role is as the gender desk officer of the GTU. Thank you, Raki. Among, among my role is promoting the general welfare of our female members, um, advocating for their human rights, advocating for their professional needs. And this, just to name a few, and this has been extended to cover the girl child. The girl child too is part of the work I do. Okay, Auntie Janet, um, that's a brief um, introduction of what you do in the GTU. Now, before we go back to your role, I would like to have a brief history of who Auntie Janet is, what you've gone through and all that, your background, your educational um, background, your teaching background and all that. Thank you, Raki. I am from Kafuta village. I was born in Kafuta. I started schooling at St. Uh, Vienna, which is in Bullock. I went through uh, my primary school there. From there, I passed my common entrance in those days, and I went to St. Joseph's High School. I was there from high school. I went to the Gambia College, and I will be pleased to inform the viewers that I was among the first badge that started the college in Pekama. We were the first. Okay. Oh, that's a good information there, that you were among the people that um, started the inception of the Gambia College Pekama campus. Exactly. That's a good plus. And I'm happy to know that we share the same alma mater as well, St. Joseph's. <laughs> yes, I was an ex pupil of St. Joseph's as well. Um, Auntie Janet, I know you are a veteran teacher. You've taught um, in several schools through the length and breadth of the country. I would like to know your experience as a teacher. What has been your experience like as a classroom teacher before you came to this position? Thank you, Raki. Before going to the Gambe College, I, I taught for one year as an unqualified teacher. And I started my teaching at St. Teresa's Lower Basic, where on the first day of my teaching career, I will never forget because the children made me cry. I was short. I was slim. The blackboards were from one corner to another. So when it was time for me to write, I just turned around and ask one of the students to allow me to stand on his chair and write. Then, behold, as I faced them and I was struggling to write on that tall blackboard, they were making fun of me. Then, one of the boys said, Teacher, so far that, no. <laughs> then, I turned back and saw the whole class, mm -hmm. you know, giggling and, you know, mm -hmm. I just climbed down, mm -hmm. 
went to my table and sat and started crying. So the same student who said, teachers of Adano, Naham Dangagata, <laughs> got up and went and called the head. Yeah. When the head came, he, you know, he took me to his office and then, you know, gave me consoling words and told me that was teaching. Yeah. This is real teaching. But at the end, I love teaching infants. I went to St. After the college, I went straight to uh, St. Joseph's School in Basse. Okay. And I taught grade one. You will be surprised to know that Kumba Konjira yeah. was my student. Kumba Konjira now, I think she is the vice principal or one of the senior of the teachers school, yeah. in, uh, Minau, yeah, in Minau, was one of my students. I love teaching. Yeah. They made me like teaching. Mm -hmm. From there, from St. Joseph's, I taught at Kobakuna and then came back home. I taught in uh, Som, taught in Jamisa, taught in Pirang, and, you know, later came to work for the Gambia Teachers Union. So it's a, a lot of 15 years on the teaching field before I came to the GTU. That's a good experience. Um, that's why you are our mother. <laughs> yeah, Auntie Janet. Um, that's a good development about your teaching career. Uh, now, we would like to know how it's been like you joining the GTU. For how long have you been with the GTU? Thank you, Raki. After teaching for 15 years, I came <clears throat> to join the GTU mm -hmm. since 2005. For another 16 years. Mm -hmm. You see, the GTU was just a continuation of my teaching profession because the GTU is about teachers, and I was a teacher before, so linking the job was very easy. In the GTU, I worked with teachers, I go to the schools, meet teachers, you know. But my uh, my work is specifically on female teachers or female members and the girl child. But as you hear gender, gender belongs to both males and female. So we look, we, 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 we look at gender issues that can be female issues or male issues. And we look at girl children issues thank you okay so basically it is to say that you're here to represent the genders not just the female gender sometimes um people mistake this too that if you hear somebody say gender you say but it's like it's gender issues that you address in the gtu okay so um auntie janet um what is it like um like to compare rural teaching and the urban teaching because you've taught in Basse, I know. Mm -hmm. You've been in Basse for several years and you taught in urban schools as well. So how will you compare the two? How will you compare the two? Thank you. That question is very interesting. You see, for me particularly, I enjoy it most when I was in the rural area. You know, urban life is very expensive and difficult when i was here in the urban you know areas mm -hmm. we all know how urban life looks how expensive it was yeah. right but compared to the rural life mm -hmm. i was saying happily i was spending less money I would tell you, I will visit my students all, the whole class, I will go from house to house to pay them a visit, know their, you know, know their family members, know how they are staying, you know, discuss with their parents. And it went to a stage that for the first time in Kobakuna school, because when I taught in St. Joseph, I was later posted to Kobakuna. When I went to Kobakunda school, we had 
an outing that we were to go to Amitage. All the females or all the girls were denied to go. They said it is taboo. It is only the boys that visit. So what, what I did was I went from house to house mm -hmm. trying to convince their parents mm -hmm. that I will take care of the girls, mm -hmm. go with them, mm -hmm. stay with them, and bring them home. Yeah. Some parents were reluctant, yeah. but at the end they allowed me. Because also I also formed a, a, a round of steam for the girls and other indoors for the girls. Mm -hmm. So, and I knew I was going to take care of them. Yeah. Come and see us at Amitage in a wide hall. We all spend the night together with the girls. In fact, I was sitting. For most of the time, I would be sitting if they are sleeping. Yeah, I, yes, mm -hmm. I have some big girls mm -hmm. who would sit with me. Mm -hmm. You know, we were there. So when we are ready and went back, I took the children back to their homes one by one until the last one. Mm -hmm. That was the time I gained the confidence of the parents. Up to when it was time for me to come home, mm -hmm. they said no. They went to the Alkali. Oh. The Alkali was called by Kaoyoro also. They took me there and said, no, I am not leaving. <laughs> For the first year, I stayed. Mm -hmm. Second year, because my uh, late elder brother was there on teaching too, he came home mm -hmm. because he was supposed to go to Bristol. Mm -hmm. I said, I am going. I am not even going to tell people I am going. That was how I just left Basse. Oh. But left to them, I would have been there. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that's that's because of the rapport you built with the community and Indeed. all that. Yeah, that's a good thing. Um, Auntie Janet, if there are any, um, did you face any challenges in teaching in the rural areas? Thank you. Another interesting question. There are challenges. There were challenges before my time. There were challenges during my time. Mm -hmm. And there are still challenges because we have got members representing the female teachers in every region mm -hmm. and we are hearing stories mm -hmm. for me personally there were challenges like when i was going there i was a spinster just from college and you know no child no we know what that means mm -hmm. harassment yeah. here and there mm -hmm. up till now we are hearing stories mm -hmm. from our representatives from the teachers there that when you are posted as a young teacher, mm -hmm. you are harassed. Yeah. So those issues are still there. Mm -hmm. Also, you know, getting access, mm -hmm. maybe now is better, but in those days, getting access to good medical care was not available, available. in the rural area. You know, having the chance to do other studies mm -hmm. It was not there. Yeah. So all those things are challenges. If you want to further your education mm -hmm. and you are in the rural area, it is a pity you go to some schools in the rural area to get to the school, you walk and you believe, no, you are lost. Mm -hmm. So all is there. Yeah. So obviously there are challenges. Yeah. In everything that you do in life, there must be challenges, and but there are good um, prospects as well. So, what were some of the things that you enjoy most in the teaching field? Thank you. Most in the teaching field, in your school, you are free. You have all the time for the students. You can invite them to your home. Like I was doing, they would come to my home. I will stay with them, mm -hmm. we will have studies, we will, you know, they will play at each other mm -hmm. and then they go home. During weekends, if I visit them and found them in their homes doing chores, mm -hmm. like laundering, mm -hmm. I join them. Mm -hmm. So you enjoy that thing. Yeah. Here in the urban area, mm -hmm. you will not see that. Mm -hmm. So those were some of the things. That, in fact, they would pound rice, mm -hmm. 
they would ask me, can you walk Chura? Mm -hmm. I will go and help them. Mm -hmm. I pound, they give me some. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I don't take it because I don't cook. Mm -hmm. I was, I rented a basin. Yeah. So all those things are things you enjoyed. Yeah. Whatever they have, the students, they would say, teacher, mm -hmm. this is for you. This is for you yeah. My mother said, let me give you this. Mm -hmm. You see, it's very appreciative. Yeah, exactly. When you are down there mm -hmm. and you bring yourself down to down them, to them yeah. you enjoy. You enjoy yeah. As particularly when I was in Som, mm -hmm. I taught in Som, I taught in Pirang, okay. I taught in Buyam. Mm -hmm. No, you, you are down to their level. Yes. You are a queen yes. or a king. Yeah. Thank you. I can address to that because my dad was also in the rural areas as a teacher and I was always with him. Mm. So teaching um, in the rural areas is far enjoyable than teaching in the urban areas because here they don't know the value of teachers up here. People don't, don't, don't look into the value of teachers. Um, Auntie Janet, um, there is a membership of West African female, I don't know, teachers committee that you are part of. Yeah. Can you buttress more on that? Thank you, Raki. You see, the Gambia Teachers Union is a member of the Education International. And Education International is a global umbrella of teacher unions. It has so many members. In the Gambia here, we are lucky to have one union. But just go to our neighboring country, Senegal. They have got over 50 unions, teacher unions. So you talk about all those unions together, mm -hmm. being a member of the, 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 the Education International. Mm -hmm. And with us, the Gambia Teachers Union, we are in the, 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 the African region, yeah. which is called Awen. Awen yeah. And the Awen, which is the African region is divided into five sub-regions. Okay. You have the West African region, the Central region, the Southern region, the Eastern region, and the Northern region. Okay. Our Gambia Teachers Union, because we are in the West Africa, we are in the Wawen. The, the, okay. Wawen. the West, yes, the oh, Western, Western, Western region, region yes. Okay. Awen is the whole African. Africa. Right. So, and for Awen, mm -hmm. the gender desk officers mm -hmm. have got, they, they, they have a committee mm -hmm. that meets. Sometimes it's the gender desk officers. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it is the general secretaries. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the presidents. Okay. They come together to discuss teacher issues. Mm -hmm. At one point, we wanted all West African teacher unions mm -hmm. to come together on the water okay. to form a union so that it, it, it makes it easy mm -hmm. when it comes to teacher issues because mm -hmm. we know the issues are the same for teachers everywhere. Yeah. Teachers in the Gambia, teachers in Sierra Leone, teachers in uh, Ghana, yes. issues are the same. the same. So if we come together and discuss our issues, we chart the way forward. Sure. This is why we are a member of that. Despite being a member of the EI, mm -hmm. we are a member of African uh, network, which is divided into five mm -hmm. sub-regional networks. Okay. But we network with all of them. Okay. We have meetings. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we travel and meet together yeah. at a country or mm -hmm. at a union mm -hmm. to discuss our issues. Our way forward. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So that's a good development. That is to say, the Awen is for the whole Africa, and the yes. Wawen is for the West yes. African region. Yes. Okay. That's a good development. Uh, coming down, um, coming back to the Gambia, Auntie Janet. Um, how would you um rate the girl child against the boy child in the school? Do you think the girls are more in the school system, or the boys are more? Thank you. Another interesting question. But I believe in data. What I know, because the girl child is part of my mandate. 
And we, with other stakeholders in education, like the gender unit in education, FAWEGAM, which is a female education uh, uh, network, mm -hmm. you have the Action Aid, you have all other stakeholders, mm -hmm. organizations. Mm -hmm. We do network together. Okay. We do come together to organize uh, uh, activities, like on enrollment, mm -hmm. we go out and meet, you know, uh, the, the, the mother's clubs, mm -hmm. so that we see that in communities, mm -hmm. girls are not left out. Mm -hmm. We know it, is a it was a unfortunate situation mm -hmm. in the Gambia when schooling started, because we know that in those days, mm -hmm. not every child goes to school, so. particularly the girl child. Yeah. If you are a family of, you know, a family and you had children that are boys and girls, mm -hmm. you prefer sending the boys than the girls. Mm -hmm. But now things have changed. Yeah. And in those days, in the primary level, mm -hmm. enrollment is was more for the girls than the boys. Yeah. But like I said, I believe in data mm -hmm. and I have not got the data recently. Mm -hmm. What I know at the primary level, mm -hmm. enrollment, mm -hmm. the parity on uh, uh, boys and girls, mm -hmm. if still there, mm -hmm. I think the girls dominate. Yeah. Or there are more girls in the primary. But as the girls go on, you know, reaching upper classes, mm -hmm. they drop. Yeah. And there are so many reasons. Mm -hmm. Like I said before, we have got structures in the regions. So. And, you know, we, we, we lace with them for whatever issues they have to tell us. Mm -hmm. There are these issues of teenage pregnancy, yeah. child marriage. Yeah. You know, some girls have other issues mm -hmm. like when we went around there there was a girl who was on her menses mm -hmm. and she cannot stay in the school sorry she yeah. cannot go home yeah. she was there until closing time before she left mm -hmm. you know that girl eventually left school because at the end she was bullied mm -hmm. by the colleagues, the boys, mm -hmm. you know, which was not her own making. Yeah. This has prompted us to get funds mm -hmm. and make reusable sanitary pads. Mm -hmm. And we are doing that in the regions, mm -hmm. helping the girls. Mm -hmm. Because the sanitary pads, the ready-made sanitary pads can be expensive. Yes where a parent cannot provide a, a lunch mm -hmm. for three of her children also, you know, it would be very difficult for mm -hmm. her mm -hmm. to provide sanitary parts. But with the, re the re reusable ones we are making, yeah. it helps. Yeah, it does. And it is durable and less expensive. Mm -hmm. So we are helping the girls, that is helping them mm -hmm. to stay in school, yeah to perform, mm -hmm. you know, to compete the boys. Mm -hmm. Because if you know you are on your menses and you are, you are well prepared for it, mm -hmm. you will not fear that, no, I will stain my uniform, no, my colleagues will laugh at me. Mm -hmm. You will sit comfortably, you will do the, the activities like running or other activities in the yes. school. Yeah. yeah, that's a good thing. Um, to try to make girls stay in school is one of the most important things because there are so many issues surrounding their um, surrounding um, their issues that, that can bring them down and then make them uncomfortable to be dropped out. Um, uh, you touched something in your discourse on Auntie Janet, um, the modest clubs in the school. So I believe as the gender desk officer of the GTU, you lace with them directly. So what do you think is their role or how are they helpful to you? Thank you. 
the mother's clubs are very helpful. You see, because they are the ones in the region, <clears throat> they help. They look, <clears throat> they help in encouraging girls, parents to send them to school. They go around the school, get, you know, in some of the schools, they can give help, like they offer to, if there are torn uniforms, they would show them, you know, and other works that they can help in the school. They are very, very important. Yeah. Okay. Um, coming down to the GTU level again, um, the membership of the GTU, the male um, versus the female membership, how do you see that one as well? We have more males than females. <laughs> in fact, I said here before that, you go to a school in the rural area, there is no female teacher, but there are always males. So, but I remember in those days, teachers were not as they are now. <clears throat> there are more teachers now, and there is hope that we will still continue to have more because the young ones are coming into teaching. When I was going to school, the teachers are not very young as yeah. they are now. Yeah. So, and now on postings, mm -hmm. because there are incentives, mm -hmm. teachers are going out on postings. Yeah. There is this allowance mm -hmm. on hardship. hardship yeah. Okay? Uh, the, the, the government now are building schools that have got quarters mm -hmm. where teachers can accommodation, stay. Yeah. Accommodation. So, we, and you know, things are now being trying to be centralized from the government. Yeah. Because at Basse, you have a college, mm -hmm. right? So, those are things that can help the young ones go out. But in those days, uh, it was just like taboo for a young teacher to leave your parents. Like when I was going in Basse, mm -hmm. going to Basse for postings, mm -hmm. my father said, no, don't go. I said, Daddy, I must go because I want to experience. <laughs> so eventually I went. Yeah. But when I was harassed, mm -hmm. That's when you I like, said, uh, Daddy, you to told me the truth mm -hmm. and I did not. You know, because I did not know, mm -hmm. but I was strong enough. Yeah, I was strong enough to overcome it. Yes. I said, no, I don't want. There was, there was this education officer. Mm -hmm. Hey, <clears throat> this one gave me a hell lot of trouble. In fact, he went further to say he must see to it that mm -hmm. nobody falls for me. Oh, really? Really. It was very mm -hmm. tough. Okay. So the harassment is still there. Mm -hmm. It's still there. The harassment of teachers, mm -hmm. particularly at workplace, is mm -hmm. still there. It's still there. You are right. Um, that's why most of us did not <laughs> did not exactly. go to the rural Gambia exactly. because the time I was also posted to the rural Gambia, I was not yet married, so my dad did not allow me to go. Yeah. So maybe this is why, this is what he know because mm -hmm. he has experience of the urban areas and the rural yeah. areas. So, um, Auntie Janet, coming back to um, the GTU again, um, what are the things that you have on the pipeline for the women? Um, for the female teachers, like, what are the incentives you have for them? Thank you. Here at the GTU, we do not segregate to say this is for the female teachers or this is for the male teachers. Mm -hmm. But one thing I know, we are encouraging female teachers to come up now. There is this... Uh, uh, organ of the Gambia Teachers Union, where we, which is called the Young Teachers Platform. And young teachers are there in the platform. 
and they comprises of males and females. There are young, young females that we are trying to encourage. In these schools, we want female teachers to be school representative. Because being a member of the GTU, the first, the stepping stone that can make you climb up the ladder is being a school representative. If you are a school representative, you are already in the GTU. And that can give you a ticket, right? Because as a school rep, you can rise to become a regional executive member. From there, you can rise to be an executive member, national executive member. And we are trying to encourage all the girls. There is this training, like we under the uh, under the gender unit. Yes. There is this training at the MDI, mm -hmm. which is the gender training. Yes. I attended it. Some female teachers were also paid to attend it by the GTU. Mm -hmm. We used to have extramural classes, but due to funds that has stopped. And we are looking for a way to uh, uh, revive it. Okay. And with the extramural classes, you will see that many female teachers mm -hmm. who join the classes mm -hmm. and have not got marks to the university or to the college, mm -hmm. the Gambia Teachers Union pays their tuition and they receive those exams or those subjects okay. and they are enabled to go to the Gambia College or to the university. Okay. You see, we are doing there, there are prospects. Yeah. I remember in those days, mm -hmm. you teach until you are retired, you don't have you don't have a bicycle. Yes. But now teachers with a credit union have got vehicles, yeah. they have got houses, mm -hmm. and, you know, many, many more opportunities. Like, you save with them, you can take a loan to buy the necessary things you need mm -hmm. for your house and the like. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Um, okay, we are coming to the end of the program, but before the end, um, I would like to ask you, if there are any advices that you can give to teachers, especially female teachers in the system. Thank you, Raki. My advice to female teachers, particularly the young teachers, is that let them push hard. The sky is the limit, but let their yes be yes and their no be no. Let no one harass them at workplace. They have all rights to refuse and stand firm to say no and let their no be no, right? Things are getting brighter. Yes. When I, in those days, the salary compared to the teaching salary now is very, very different. So, and teaching is one of the most paying jobs. Mm -hmm. Let them just hold on to the teaching, mm -hmm. let them try to read, mm -hmm. you know, and improve, mm -hmm. and things will be fine. Sure. That's a good advice coming from our mother there. Um, viewers, we've come to the end of the program. I will ask Auntie Janet to give a final remark to the viewers and say a goodbye. Thank you, viewers. I am happy to be interviewed today at the GTU quarters, particularly sitting behind the coconut tree <laughs> that I planted. Mm -hmm. So this, I will never forget. Mm -hmm. I will, I cherish this interview. I love the GTU and I love all of you over there, our members. Mm -hmm. So thank you and keep up. The good work you are doing. Thank you, Raki. Thank you, Auntie Janet. We say thank you um, for the warm welcome, and we say thank you for the sweet, um, swift af uh, acceptance of 
being interviewed because we did not give you notice prior. It was just a short notice and then you accepted to be interviewed. Um, viewers, we say thank you to Auntie Janet. We say thank you to all of you that have been following our programs and keep following. It's been me, Raki, your host, until we come your way next um, Tuesday, inshallah, the same time, the same place. It's Fine TV Gambia, your only viewpoint. It's a goodbye from us.